Hello, welcome to another video. As you can tell from the title and the thumbnail, today we are doing my August wrap up. And I think I had an all right reading month. It's definitely not my best reading month so far this year because this year's been a bit wild. Um, but it was a decent reading month. So I read a total of 12 books in August, which prior to this year, 12 books had been my best book total in a month ever. We're still happy with 12 books in August. And if I just check my corpile stats sheet. I read a total of 4,218 pages across those 12 books. So you know how a wrap up works, we're gonna briefly touch upon the 12 books that I read and finished in August. The first book that I read in the month of August was Gargantus by Thomas Taylor. This is the sequel to Malamanda which I read a little while ago and really enjoyed and the sequel I think was just as good if not better. So Malamanda and Gargantus are set in this seaside town called Erie on Sea where in the summer it's cheery on sea and it's all great and wonderful but then in the colder months it's very gloomy and the like neon lights are blown out and it's all very eerie on sea. I think the atmosphere in these books is absolutely fantastic and one of the biggest selling points of it for me. Um, but the series is the legends of Eerie on Sea and in Malamanda there is the legend of the Malamanda and in Gargantus there is the legend of Gargantus and whether Gargantus has woken. Um, so the books follow Herbert Lemon and Violet Palmer. Herbie is the lost and founder at this hotel and it always starts off with something lost being turned in at his lost and found station and that kind of kicks off the whole story. But I love these characters, I love this atmosphere. They're just so compelling to read, like absolutely gold up. Gave this one four stars overall. It scored pretty well on Core Pile. Yeah, eights and nines across the board on Core Pile for this. I really don't have any criticism of it. It was really good. It just didn't quite give me that like five star punch but still thoroughly enjoyable and I really recommend these books if you like middle grade and like a bit of a creepy eerie middle grade. These are great. Quick reads, great compelling characters, atmosphere is fabulous. So yeah, four stars for Gargantus by Thomas Taylor. Next up I read Skyward Volume 3 by Joe Henderson and co. and Co. Uh, this is volume three of the Skyward comic series which is actually the final comic in the series which I didn't know going into this but yeah this does wrap up the story. So Skyward is a comic series that I've read all of so far this year and have really enjoyed. It's about a world where one day gravity was switched off and our main character's dad was something to do with that. Um, so he's lived his life in a world with gravity and then experience G-Day. Our main character was born shortly before G-Day so she has lived pretty much her entire life with no gravity and is kind of used to that. The world here is really interesting because it kind of shows the like side effects of what would happen in a world with no gravity like giant man-eating bugs. Like it was really fascinating um, but of course our main character gets wrapped up in something a little political that she probably shouldn't have but was kind of destined to and she goes on a bit of a um, journey of discovery about her family and the world she lives in. I really enjoyed it. I think three volumes feels very short but I think this volume was my favourite of them and it wrapped up really nicely. I liked the conclusion. So if you want a quick comic series to get through um, that is really compelling and has an interesting world. I really do recommend Skyward. I've quite enjoyed it. But yeah, I gave this one four stars. It got sevens and eights across the board on Core Pile, so a decent four star rating and I think it was my favourite of the three. Next up, I managed to finish Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This is the third and final book in the Farsia trilogy by Robin Hobb but only the third book in a much more expansive series being The Realm of the Elderling. Um, I am of course participating in Elderling Along where I will be reading the works of Robin Hobb and 
we finished the Farsia trilogy. I'm disappointed to say that I think this book is possibly my least favourite of the three and there was a decent portion of this book, like the first three, four hundred pages, where I just was not into this. I was bored, it felt very repetitive and cyclical and the characters weren't getting anywhere and we were kind of detached from the parts of the story that I liked being the politics and the goings on of the world and it was very lonely for the first half of this which wasn't to my taste but at the same time I appreciate that we had that segment of the series because it showed the struggles that our characters gone through. Anyway, um, the series follows a young boy called Fitz who is the bastard son of the king in waiting. Um, when he discovers he has a bastard son though, he abdicates the throne and runs off to the countryside. Um, leaving Fitz in a unique position, he's a bastard but he's also a commoner. So he has royal blood and peasant blood, so the king utilises this and trains him up as a royal assassin and it follows his journey and lots of political ongoings of the duchies. As a whole, I've liked the series. I like Robin Hobb's writing. I just think this book disappointed me a lot. That being said, it still got four stars. It did only just scrape four stars for me. Um, I think it was like six and sevens. Yeah, six sevens across the board and a nine for characters because the characters are fantastic. So it just scraped a four star rating just because I think the first 400 pages could have done with maybe being like half the length. So we still got that struggle, but not quite the like boring trudging that it felt like for me. But yeah, glad to have finished the Farsia trilogy. Excited to get back to Fitz at some point, but of course we have like ship traders in between. Four stars for Assassin's Quest. There is a whole live show on this on my channel actually. This one was on my channel. Um, so if you want to hear full in-depth thoughts on this one then feel free to watch that. <laughs> Next up I read Vengeful by Victoria Schwab. I was buddy reading this with Becca from Becca and the Books as we are tackling the works of Victoria Schwab. This is one of the only books we're buddy reading from Schwab that I had not already read because it's no secret to anyone that I am an enormous Victoria Schwab fan. I love her works. I have like my Schwab shrine going on behind me. Um, but I had been putting off getting to Vengeful because I'd heard so many bad reviews for it. People saying that it was nowhere near as good as Vicious, perhaps didn't need to be written, Ah, like lots of alarm bells. I don't know why that made me nervous though because in my mind Schwab can do no wrong and I absolutely adored this. So Vicious follows Victor and Eli who are friends in university doing a thesis on extraordinaries and how to become them. They learn that having a near-death experience gives someone extraordinary abilities, so they experiment with killing themselves and each other until they have success. It then flashes to an alternate timeline like 10 years in the future where Victor has just escaped prison and has a score to settle with Eli they are now mortal enemies. This one follows on pretty much directly from Vicious but has the introduction of Marcella and June who are two very interesting characters to me. Um, apparently some of the criticism on this has been that there wasn't enough of Victor and Eli but I definitely think the balance was very good here with the introduction of Marcella and June as well. I liked how the storylines all collided. It was still brutal and I loved it and Victoria Schwab can still do no wrong by me. I adore this book. In my opinion, this is better than Vicious and we all know how much I love Vicious so I absolutely loved this and June intrigues me so much. Um, and when there is eventually more in the villain series, I am so eager to discover more about June. It kind of goes without saying that this got five stars on Core Pile. <laughs> it got mostly tens, a couple of nines, but mostly tens. Like, this is currently sitting at my favourite book of the year, which is incredible. So I... <sighs> I'm mad at myself for putting this off for so long because it was so fantastic. So five stars to Vengeful. Victoria Schwab, every time I read from her, just re-solidifies her spot as my favourite author. Not that that ever really wavers, but I love Schwab and um, probably always will.
So yeah, five stars. I'll stop gushing now. And we stop gushing about Schwab to move on to gushing about Sebastian de Castell, because the next book I read was Shadow Black, which is the second book in the Spellslinger series from Sebastian de Castell. I was buddy reading this one with Molly from Mind of Molly, and this was my first book of the Raidathon, which is my 24-hour readathon that I do. Sometimes I've kind of been doing them monthly, but I think the August one was the last one for a while. But this is the second book in the Spellslinger series, which follows a young boy called Kellen who's approaching his 16th birthday in the first book, which is when a mage takes their mage's trials. Only problem is, his magic has vanished. In comes Ferius Parfax, who is this southern sounding woman who um, has a few tricks up her sleeve and is able to help Kellen out a little bit. And this kicks off a whole chain of events. Kellen is a catalyst for a lot of things that go wrong in this world. It's so action-packed, so character-driven, but also like the political plot behind it all as well. I love this series. I've gushed about it so many times. You probably don't need to hear me do it again. But if you have not yet picked up the Spellslinger series by Sebastian de Castell, I really encourage you to do so because it has everything that I love in it. That being said, I appreciate that Sebastian de Castell's writing perhaps isn't for everybody. It's quite sarcastic and witty and he quite often breaks down the barriers between the narrator and the reader and will address you personally. Um, it can be a bit off-putting for some people, but his writing style really meshes very well with me. So I would encourage you to give it a go just to see if his writing style is for you, because if you can get along with his writing style, the books are fantastic. I love them. Okay, five stars for Shadow Black. Obviously, it's a reread. I love this. I love this series. Probably goes without saying. Next up, I read The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste, which was the middle grade monthly pick for August. The live show for that actually happened on the day I'm filming this, yesterday, so it is up on my channel. I will link that somewhere for you if you want to hear me and Gavin talk in some depth about this one. But The Jumbies follows a young girl whose mother passed away, I think it was 10 years ago. She lives with her father on the edge of the forest, where it is rumoured to be full of these Jumbies, which are horrific creatures that lurk in the darkness. Um, however, she's kind of grown up to believe them as bedtime stories, they're not really real, until one day she sees one and discovers that they are a lot more real than she first thought, and threatening her family and her village. It's a really interesting story, it's very short and packed with a moral at the end of it, which I think is very cleverly done. It's also a different sort of creepy for a middle grade. Like, I like a creepy middle grade, and I did like this it's a different level of creepy. Like, it's quite scary the way these creatures come out and there are actually, like, consequences with this plot, which I really appreciate because I think quite often in middle grade the plot is dangerous and there is this risk but nothing ever really happens. But there are consequences in this book for the plot being as dangerous as it is. Um, I think the atmosphere was really well done in this one, but something about it just didn't quite hit for me and I think it was that we didn't have enough characters development. I didn't feel attached to the characters at all, but it was a very short book. And I think the shortness of the book worked well with the pacing of it and how the, like, atmosphere was really palpable, like, you could really feel the tension and the way it was written towards the end, it was all very sharp and quick and it felt tense, like, that atmosphere was really strong. But I think it then lacked in character development and, like, relationship building with the characters. Um, and there were certain parts of it with the, like, characters' relationships with each other that just felt really awkward and unnatural. But overall, I gave it three stars. Definitely had its strong points and its low points, but me and Gavin had a big old chat about it for Middle Grade Monthly yesterday, so I will link that if you want in-depth thoughts on the Jumbies, but yeah, overall I gave it a three star. Next up, I read Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson, thanks to NetGalley for giving me an arc for this one, because like my most anticipated children's release this year, I think? I love Sophie Anderson's books. Sophie Anderson wrote The House with Chicken Legs and The Girl Who Speaks Bear, which are two of my favourite middle grade books and The Castle of Tangled Magic kind of continues that series of Slavic folklore inspired retellings that are just beautiful, magical, atmospheric and everything that I love. And I really think Castle of Tangled Magic is Sophie Anderson's best work yet 
I absolutely adored it. So this book follows a young girl called Olia who is not a princess but a descendant of royalty who lives in this big castle that um, is perhaps full of magic and her grandmother kind of gives her these cryptic clues about how she needs to find the magic within this castle and then a storm strikes and there is a risk of the castle being demolished and Olia has to find the magic to save the castle and it I don't want to say too much because I don't want to risk spoiling anything but it is such a magical atmospheric adventure and what Sophie Anderson does so well is this like found family thing like in The Girl Who Speaks Bear the main character there finds her herd as she goes on her journey and Olia does a very similar thing in this where she wants to do right by so many people so along her journey she picks up all of these other characters and wants to make their lives better she wants to do what's right by everyone and it's such a beautiful message and such a well-crafted story I absolutely loved it and we all know that the like Slavic folklore vibes in books is something that I absolutely love and Sophie Anderson does it so so well so I gave this one five stars I think it got like nines across the board probably nines and tens across the board on core pile it was fantastic I loved it I can't wait to own it physically and reread it because it was such a beautiful, beautiful story and when it's released everyone should read it because it's incredible. Next up I read The Story of Babushka by Catherine Flores. This is a children's book about Russian nesting dolls or matryoshkas. When I mentioned this book previously people mentioned how Babushka is the word for grandmother so that was a concerning title. That is addressed within the first page of this book just to put any concerns to rest. Um, that hold on let me find it. A beautiful matryoshka doll called Babushka. So Babushka is her name, it's not saying that the doll is a Babushka, it is a matryoshka doll. Um, so just to put those concerns to rest. But this is a very simply yet elegantly told children's story about how your life cannot be fulfilled if you only focus on one aspect of yourself. Like personalities and people are multi-layered and you need every aspect of yourself in order to be fulfilled and happy. What happens in this book is our Matryoshka doll has all of her personalities inside her and each one represents something and each one of these dolls want to find the meaning of their life. So the doll that represents beauty wants to go out and find love because she's beautiful and deserves to be loved. The one that has talent wants to go and work but each each doll wants to find the meaning of life and they discover that out on their own their life is not fulfilled and they are not happy but when they are all together that's when they can find true fulfillment and the meaning of their life. I think it's a really elegant moral for the target audience. I think it was done very well. Um, I will also say the illustrations in here are absolutely beautiful and I think it would make it really engaging for that younger audience. That being said it's not a middle grade, it is a children's book um, so it is for a younger target audience than I would usually read. So I may have rated slightly generously but I gave this one four stars. I think for its target audience it really does the job. It would be an engaging story to read to children and I think that that's kind of what its purpose is and how it should be told. But yeah I gave it four stars overall and um, it was an entertaining read. I had a good time reading it so four stars for that one. I then picked up The Adventure Zone Volume 1 Here There Be Gerblins by the McElroys. Um, this is based on a podcast that's based on D&D &D, and they turned it into a comic. Now I have played d and I am familiar with D&D &D, um, but this just wasn't as funny as I wanted it to be it was kind of pitched as a funny comic that would be a laugh to read and I didn't really get that from this unfortunately. I don't know if maybe I'm not into D&D &D enough to find it funny or if it's just not my sort of humour. It was entertaining enough, I had a decent time reading it but I don't think I would continue the series because um, I know it definitely does continue. But yeah, I think reading this one once is enough for me. I gave it three stars overall. The artwork was really nice. I do, I do like 
the art, but the story just lacked something for me. But three stars overall, it wasn't by no means bad, I just was expecting something a lot funnier and that humour wasn't there for me personally. So three stars for that one. And then for my final read of Raidathon, because yes I read six books for Raidathon, um, was Lumberjanes volume 13, Indoor Recess. Now Lumberjanes Whenever I talk about it, I always talk about how Lumberjanes has been very up and down for me. Some volumes I've really loved, some volumes have been a bit more of a miss. And this was, I think, one of those in the middle sort of ones. It wasn't great. It also wasn't the worst. It definitely had a plot. So in this one, there's a storm, meaning they can't go outside, so they have to do activities in the mess hall and they're playing board games, but a couple of them run away and find some giant bugs basically. At this point though I feel like I'm reading this more so because I enjoy the characters than the comics themselves. They're just becoming a bit bleh. I feel like when we got to like volume 9 onwards, maybe a little bit earlier than that, is when they've gone a little bit like meh and I'm just there because I'm invested in the characters and the plot and the atmosphere and that magic just isn't there anymore the way it used to be. So the premise of Lumberjanes is that there's this group of awesome girls at this summer camp, but in this summer camp things are not quite what they seem. There's a lot of mysterious and magical goings on. There are dinosaurs, yetis, mermaids. There's all sorts of things in this forest. At one point there are um, Greek gods that turn up. There's um, shape-shifting bear woman. Um, time is questionable at a point. Like there's a lot going on in here and there's a lot of potential for fantastic things. And then I feel like playing board games and finding giant bugs is just like... Meh. I gave this one three stars though. I'm still massively attached to the characters, which always amps up my rating because you rate characters individually in Core Pile, so characters bumps it up massively. But yeah, this one got three stars overall. Next up we have Kingdom of Souls by Raina Barron. This one I read for Read Rate Review and then unfortunately couldn't participate in the live show myself, so gutted to have missed out on that one. But this one follows a young girl called Ara who is the daughter of a couple of powerful witch doctors. Her family have always been very powerful with magic, however magic has not yet come to Ara. She is a proud person, she doesn't want to stoop very low, um, but magic is not coming to her. And when there is a threat in her town, um, there is a child snatcher on the loose who is kidnapping children. Ara may stoop as low as trading years of her life for magic in order to put an end to the child snatching. It goes off on a different tangent and path and there is a lot more to the plot than that. Um, the last hundred pages of this I think were brilliant but something about this just really didn't keep me intrigued and I'm wondering whether Raina Barron's writing is perhaps not for me because the premise of this and thinking about this like in theory it's fantastic. I love every aspect of it. It's really interesting to me but the way it was told it just failed to keep my attention and I found it very easy to put down and hard to pick back up again. And I had a similar sort of thing with Maya and the Rising Dark by Rena Baron. Like the mythology behind it and the magic, everything was really intriguing, but just the way it was told didn't captivate me as much and I had the same problem with this one. So I think Rena Baron's writing is potentially not for me, but that being said, the last hundred pages of this was really good, which makes me think I probably would pick up the sequel because I would want to know how that goes because it kind of threw a spanner in the works and everything I expected was like flipped around. So I might pick up the sequel to this but the writing style may not be for me. It felt very cyclical. It's told in first person from Ara's perspective so we're in her head a lot of the time and it just felt like we were going round in circles with her thoughts a lot and weren't making much progress, weren't getting anywhere, the plot wasn't developing because we were just stuck in Ara's thoughts. But then yeah, towards the end things definitely did 
progress a lot and it became a lot more interesting. Overall this one got three stars from me with six and sevens across the board on Corpile so by no means bad. Like as I say the plot, the premise was all very interesting and had such potential for me to love it. I just think Rainer Barron's storytelling might not be for me. And then finally the last book that I read in the month of August was The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I adored this. I listened to this on Audible whilst also reading along and I definitely think that that is the route to take with this book. It was so well produced, like the production of the atmosphere in the audiobook really highlighted the atmosphere in the written book so it like just meshed together so well to make it an experience. So if you're debating picking this one up and the audiobook could be an option for you, I would encourage you to take that route if you can because it made it an experience. So the premise of this book is that New York has reached a state of maturity where it's having a rebirth and the city is personified into these characters that represent the boroughs of the city. I've never been to New York, I'm not familiar with New York and I know that N.K. Jemisin has said that this book is like her love story to New York so I can't necessarily feel that from it because I'm not familiar with New York, I don't feel that way about New York at all but the story was so interesting. It was so weird and wacky and like intriguing, like everything just had my brain going round. I was so into this. As I say, we follow the boroughs. We've got Manhattan, um, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens and Staten Island. The way they were- all of those characters were really interesting. Everything about everything in this book was so captivating to me. I did not want to put this down. This is the sort of book that I very easily could have devoured in like one sitting if I had the time because you know it's not a short one but I think listening to the audiobook of this all in one go would be fantastic. Also thinking about that like if this was adapted into a movie I feel like that would be the sort of movie I would really like. I probably don't talk about this too much but I like a bit of weird in my books like Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer is one of my fave books. I love that. It's got that like bit of weird. This has got that bit weird because there is a threat to the city that is from another dimension and is a bit weird and that weirdness I really liked. I don't know how much I can say about this without spoiling it so I won't say too much more but the atmosphere and that bit weird was like great. I loved it and the characters were all really interesting and I wanted to learn more about them at every opportunity. The way they were presented was fantastic, like the enigmas around them. I just wanted to learn more about them and see them interacting with each other and how them being together impacted things to do with the weird. It was brilliant. I loved this. Um, I gave this one four stars overall on Corpile. I think it got eights pretty much across the board. There might have been a nine in there. Eights and nines, there was a couple of nines in there, so eights and nines across the board for this one. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm surprised it, I didn't put it any higher than that because I had a really good time with this and 100% recommend the audiobook it was brilliant. There we go, that was my August reading. Um, if you've read any of these books and want to chat to me about any of these books then please feel free to do so down below. But I'm pretty happy with my August reading. Um, I feel like from now on my reading might go downhill because I am going back to work in September. Um, I'm actually filming this on the bank holiday Monday so I go back to work tomorrow but this will probably go up later in the week. So yeah my reading may take a little plummet but I'm already so far ahead on my Goodreads goal thanks to how much I've been reading so that's fantastic. But yeah I'm happy with my August reading and that just about brings us to the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed. If you have give us a thumbs up and chat to me down below and um, I will see you in the next one. Bye!